Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. You know, last week, Pastor, in your Bible study, you briefly mentioned prophecy. And you were speaking about the last prophetic event that's going to take place on the prophetic calendar, the rapture of the church. And I started thinking about the word prophecy. And, and you look around us and we, you see churches having prophecy conferences and prophecy series and there's books written on prophecy yeah. and I think there's this idea that prophecy is this hidden revelation of God but I like what you shared and I want to ask if you could expound a little bit about on this is that prophecy is God's word there's nothing hidden uh, I was flipping through the channels a couple of nights ago my wife's like what are you doing wasting your time with that and they're having this prophetic conferences with these apostles yeah, right. and these apostles had a special word a hidden secret that if you give that this would be the key that's going to unlock this prophetic series in your life and people were sending away that's very it. sad and uh and i think people have the wrong idea of what prophecy is could you share a little bit of what prophecy is and what it isn't you know there the the word prophecy is normally uh, normally used to describe one of two things, either the foretelling of future events, you know, so you have books that are entire books of prophecy from Ezekiel and Jeremiah and jo uh, Joel and, and New Testament books like Revelation. I mean, they're, they're books that are intended to communicate future events. They're, they're foretelling. And so God had, had his men who he refers to as his prophets who would speak forth his mind. He says, the Lord does nothing unless he reveals it first to his prophets. And so the prophets were those who were speaking the word of the Lord to the people in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, you have the prophets, you know, the church was built on apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So you had, especially in the early days of the church, you had those who were speaking forth future events, but the word also speaks concerning forth telling mm -hmm. so one is foretelling the other is forth telling or speaking forth the things of the lord to to man and so you have you have the prophet who would speak of future events but you also have the one who would speak in a prophetic way of what god is saying for this moment and so that was that the way the uh, early church um was founded on on the foundations of of the apostles, prophets, and evangelists, etc. So what has happened is the term prophet has been uh, hijacked, I believe, by modern day charlatans. Some are calling themselves apostles so-and-so. Others are referring to themselves as the prophet so-and-so. When in fact, the church was built on the apostles. Uh, Ephesians makes that very clear that Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone, but he built his church on the teachings and doctrine that was revealed through the, um, through the apostles. And so on occasion, you would see someone who would speak forth uh, uh, the word of God, or you hear them uh, read your New Testament, and they'll be speaking of uh, things to come. Uh, you see that in so many, so many books that it's just pretty easy to see that. But the... Um, the problem is, is that we have confused that ministry with an ongoing office of some sort. And so you have these people who have television programs where they're saying, send me money. That is the sign of the false prophet. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul, when he was writing to Titus, said that these people are, chapter one, are, are, are actually uh, pilfering, they're stealing, taking advantage of, God's people, they do it for the sake of money. And so anybody who charges you for a prophetic word is a charlatan. And the reason people are believing that this is uh, coming from God is because the charlatans that are out there have uh, taught them improperly and the people who are giving are naively trusting those who are claiming some authority that in fact they took upon themselves and were never granted. So in the, in the, in the beginning of the church, because the, the entire 
canon of scripture, the 27 New Testament books had yet to be accrued. God was still using people to bring prophetic words. You know, Agabus is mentioned twice, for example, in the book of Acts, who would speak a prophetic word. But as the word was, uh, was inspired and ultimately written into what is called canon form or the 27 New Testament books as it was regarded and recognized as having authorship from the apostles and all, when those things uh, came about, the Lord ceased using prophets in the way he did at the beginning of the church. Now, there's also the gift of prophecy, which is an ongoing gift that uh, is exercised in the church and still is. So the, the gift of prophecy can still be experienced. There's no scripture that says that God ceased to, to give prophetic words, but everything is tested by scripture. Anything that does not align with scripture, anything that is contrary to it, is to be disregarded. And the one who is speaking it is to be noted, is to be pointed out as being one who's preaching a false message. I'll be speaking on this this Sunday to some degree. I'll be sharing about some of that uh, as it relates to the, um, you know, there have been those who have, who have given you know, a prophetic word that that Jesus is coming all the way back into 1988. You know, 88 reasons Jesus is coming in 88. <laughs> then he didn't, of course. And 89 reasons why Jesus is coming in 89. And then you have uh, had others who have been 94, Harold Camping. And there are various people who have uh, made these pronouncements prophetically and they have proven to be false. In Deuteronomy 13 and 15, they they uh, both those chapters, uh, they point out that you're to disregard, not listen to them because they're speaking falsely. And there was even a penalty that was enacted on the false prophet in the Old Testament for, for lying in the name of God. And so we have a number of people that I believe are, are, are inclined towards the uh, um, theatrical or the, you know, something that, that oh, isn't this amazing? send your money and we'll send you a prayer cloth or we'll send you some seeds that you plant uh, you know and the way that the seeds grow you put one you can have many from one seed so will your seed faith offering grow and you'll become much more wealthy i mean we've had that those charlatans they have no shame they have no fear of god they don't believe in the god that they profess to be preaching because they're, they're forgetting that God warned them against such utterances. But they don't care because they're, they're the apostle, they're the prophet. And if you put one of these people next to the writings of a true prophet, of Peter or Paul or, or those whom the Lord used who could speak in a prophetic way, and you put them next to these men, for them to say that they are equal is ludicrous, it's, it's, it's sinful, it's arrogance. And it, it, is, it, is, it is a right thing to point them out and to say they are false. And yet I believe that a lot of people in our cancel culture today and this mentality of, oh, never say anything that hurts people's feelings. They, 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 how would they have handled it to hear John the Baptist repent you vipers, you know, you brood of snakes? I mean, what an unkind thing. Or Jesus, you whitewashed tombs. What an... What a terrible thing to hear coming from the one who is described as love incarnate, right? Truth, truth sets you free. And God is a God of truth. And so these false prophets that we see today, you know, it breaks my heart. I mean, these, these, these people who very often cannot afford to be sending this seed faith money or whatever are being ripped off. And these people are, are just, they are just, Purloining, they're just just building their their houses on the backs of mm -hmm. the poor, and and God loves the poor, and these people, they deserve every ounce of God's chastening, and even punishment that may come upon and them. And so, Pastor, with that explanation that you gave, there's no real secret, because I think people have this idea that oh, there's some secret about Revelation with these. Prophetic um, things. The scripture says that the secret things belong unto the Lord, and those things that are revealed belong to the, the, to, to the children and the children's children. Um, there are secret things that belong only to him. Again, we're going to be looking at this to some yes. degree on, 
Sunday when Jesus only only the Father knows at the exact moment he returns. So there are certain things that the Lord restricted even Jesus while he's in the flesh and the angels don't know. So anybody who's up there telling you he has secret knowledge is someone to avoid and to point out. Well, thank you, Pastor, because uh, this one program, I'll send you the secret key to unlock your success with these sec secret revelations. Well, he should probably take that key for himself and leave me alone. <laughs> right. But the, and you mentioned those poor people that are falling that's for it. That's the thing that hurts you. And uh, that's, what, that's what's bothering because uh, wrong. Out, of the, out of their hearts, they just, Lord, help me. They're naive. And they deceive the hearts of the simple, Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 16. And it that's what they do. A special place in hell for them. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I'm not their judge, but God certainly will. I hope so. He will. <laughs> Pastor, thank you so much for sharing about, uh, about this. And it's unfortunate to f see those people falling from that. But this is important, so important that going to a Bible teaching church yeah. that teaches uh, what's error and what's truth. Yeah. And, uh, and so I want to invite you guys to come out and join us this Sunday at 8.30. Actually, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, come on out and join us as we celebrate time in God's Word and uh, worship. And then, uh, and then on Thursday and Friday, you're, you're going on a, uh, on a trip to, going to Mexico. minister to the CCA Northern Mexico pastors. Yeah, yeah. What a great time that will be to Looking spend with those pastors. I'll and, be home on Sunday, though. Yes, back and come back and join us at 8.30 and 10.45 on Sunday morning. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Amen.